Hello guys, today we will continue to discuss about the essence and chief theories in Chinese medicine. In the previous video, we have said that uh, we have discussed the essence and chief theories in philosophy fields, and we said that the definition of essence and chief in philosophy fields and in Chinese medicine and acupuncture are slightly different. So here we're going to discuss what does it mean by essence that it refers to in Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Essence refers to the liquid essence substance stored in the in organs, which is, is the most fundamental substance that constitutes the human body and maintains its life activity. So from the definition we see essence in Chinese medicine. We although we actually imported the the theories from philosophy field, but we change it a little bit. When you go to Chinese medicine, we think that essence is a kind of liquid substance. So it's not something invisible. It is something invisible, but not same as qi. When we discuss qi later, you will see the definition is quite similar. But essence, you will see when we discuss yin and yang, you will see why we use, we separate these two definition. It's very similar. The only difference is the liquid form. The liquid form, the concentrated form, we call it essence. So it stores in organs, it's going to nourish the organs, and also it's the fundamental of the qualities of human body and our life activities. So all life, all kinds of life activities are from the essence. And essence can be divided into innate essence acquired essence and here when we discuss about the innate essence the translation of innate in some books they translate as congenital so when they say congenital essence it also means innate essence it's very similar but the reason why we use innate here that's because when you see the definition of congenital and innate from the Oxford Advanced English Dictionary, you will see congenital, the definition of congenital, the explanation. It describes as of a disease or medical conditions that existing before birth. And innate, the explanation was of a quality of feeling, etc. That you have when you were when you are born. So, from the definition of these two words, you will see that's quite similar. They describe something that you have before you are born. But from the description, you will see for congenital, it more likely to describe a disease or medical condition. And innate describe a quality of feelings. And here, when we describe the essence here, innate essence, there's something from your parents. You carry on from your parents. And this kind of essence is neither a disease nor medical conditions. That's why we use innate. The innate essence is something from your parents. And acquired essence is something from your food, mostly from the food and from your digestive system. And the innate essence here is something you carry from your parents, but something you cannot change. And then the innate essence needs to be nourished by the acquired essence. So the food you eat, it changes to nutrition, changes into nutrition and uh, this essence can nourish the innate essence 
and these two atoms, these two kinds of atoms, we all call them atoms. It's quite interesting when you, when we study the, the his, history, there's one word I told you that's the Chinese character. The Chinese characters, you can actually see the, the meaning of the character, or what's related to the characters. That's because how we form the formation of the characters, one of the formation is by drawing. And the characters on the left side, the top one is Jin, the bottom one is Qi. And so atoms and Qi theories is in Chinese we write into Jin and Qi, similar to the one on the left side. But have you seen the circle in blue circle? The, the writing on the left side and the writing at the bottom of Qi. These two characters or these two drawings look quite similar. It actually means rice. So it's the rice we eat. That's also from the other side to prove that where do Jing and Qi, where do the essence and Qi come from? from the rice that's from the acquired essence so the essence the innate essence or the atoms can be benefit can be nourished by the acquired essence that's also why the acquired essence is very important in our theories the digestive system the spleen and stomach function is very important that's because of here the the rice. The essence is very important. Essence is very important, but this essence, this part, you can't change it just from your parents. The only way we can benefit, we can nourish, is the acquired essence. So that's the essence in Chinese medicine. It's a liquid form. But this liquid form we also we don't see, we can't see. The liquid substance is stored in organs. So if in a test, there's one question that I ask, where does the essence where were where where is the essence stored in our body? Okay, the issue rise stored in organs. That's where the essence. Qi. Qi in Chinese medicine refers to its uniform and invisible substance with strong vitality and continuous movement in human body. It's not only an important component of the human body, but also a source of stimulate and regulate human life. So from the definition, you will see the Qi quite similar with the definition in the philosophy, it's uniform, invisible substance. The, the qi here got very strong vitality and it constantly move in human body. If you not stop, once they stop, what happens? People pass away. That's the only way. It's even now when you see from, from the movie in the past how people they want how people know someone dies. They put their fingers in front of their nose. They try to feel is there any breathing or not. That's the most case in the movie you can see what they feeling is the the breathing air which is also the qi. So in their thoughts, they think that once the qi stop, once the breathing stop, people will pass away. So in this, this is the other way to prove that qi should not stop. They need to move in the career order. So 
is not only an important component of the human body, but also a source to regulate the human life. Qi. If the qi, the movement of qi goes different, got irregular movement, such as if the qi is supposed to go down, for instance, the stop, stomach qi, the food we eat from your mouth and go to your stomach, go to your intestine, the flow, the qi flow need to go downward. The direction is going down. However, in some condition, they move up, move up. So that's the irregular qi movements. What happens there is this irregular qi movement will cause medical condition. For instance, the the qi of the stomach need to move down, but it moves up. In this condition, the patient may suffer from nausea or vomiting. So patient from nausea or vomiting, then we will conclude that the patient have the, the symptoms, the symptom of qi re rebel or a reverse qi flow. So in our treatments, what are we going to do? We're going to regulate, we're going to recover the normal movement of qi. That's all what we do, all what Chinese medicine and acupuncture do. We try to recover the normal flow of the qi. The next question is the relationship between qi and essence. In Chinese medicine theories, the essence and the air from breathing become the qi. And the qi, we can actually, there's many kinds of qi. Even here, we didn't write here. It, qi can be separated into from yin qi and yang qi. That's something we're going to discuss later. And also qi can be divided into defensive qi, which is wei qi, yin qi, nutrition qi, petrol qi, zhong qi, primordial qi, yuan qi, or, and qi in different organs. We call the lung qi, heart, heart qi, liver qi, kidney qi, spleen qi. So there are many kinds of qi. You don't need to write about the the terms of these different qi. These different qi we're going to explain one by one in future in the in the chapter of qi, body fluid. So you don't need to worry about the, the tone, you don't understand. But here I gave I told you that we got different kinds of qi in the body. Defensive qi from the the words is quite easy to understand that it's the qi help us to defend from the environment, to defend from the passenger, to protect ourselves. The nutrition qi is something to nourish us where our nutrition comes from. And the qi in organs. So here, there's one question. That's how many qi do we have in our body? Here I gave you Five, five blocks. Five blocks, and then the qi in different organs also refer to different qi. So here's quite confusing. How many qi do we have? The answer is only one. The reason why is defensive qi, nutrition qi, petrol qi, primordial qi, and the organs qi. They're all one kind, the same qi, but from different way to describe it. Now it becomes a bit confu confused. And then if we you see from this example, you will understand what I was talking about. For instance, yourself, now when you're studying at UJ, you are a student when you when you watch in the video here, you are a student. But when you stay at home, 
you are a son or daughter of your parents, right? And then you are also grandson or granddaughter of your grandparents. In future, you might be parents of your kids. And currently, you are the classmates of your, of your classmates. And when you see from your friend's side, you are friends of your friends. So here, yourself, there's different titles of you. A son or a daughter. A student, a friend, a grandkids, parents, classmate. If you want to describe this more titles on you, that's how many of you? There's only one of you, but why you got different titles? As classmates, as friends, as a son or daughter. That's because your function in this situation. So when you study at UJ, when you study, when you when you're listening to the lecture, you are a student. Your function as a student or your function as a human being here limited to study Chinese medicine and acupuncture. That's something we discuss in now. But when you go home, when you act as a daughter or, or as a son of your parents, then your function change. Your function at home as a kid is to respect your parents, to do some housework for your parents. That's your responsibility. And then we go to your friends. Your responsibility becomes to party with them. So that's different function of our human body. When you represent in different functions, we give you different titles. That's exactly why here we gave qi different titles. The qi in the body, when they go to our superficial body to defend us from the pathogens, to help us to prevent being sick, this function we call wei qi, we call defensive qi. And the qi, when they go to digestive system, to help us to absorb the nutrition, and then the nutrition transfer to the other organs to disperse to other organs to nourish on the other organs this kind of qi we call them nutrition qi and the qi go to different organs you give them different names the qi go to the heart we call them heart qi or the qi go to the liver we call the liver qi so there's only one qi but this one can be divided into numerous and actually it's countless. That's also the theories. Do you still remember that I said in the previous video for the essence and qi theories in the philosophy? Everything is from one. One can divide it into two, and two can divide it into more. That's the theories here. Qi. Essence is from one and qi also one, but this one can divide it into two. You can divide it into yin qi or yang qi. That's the, the theory we're going to discuss later. And the qi also can be divided into different kinds of qi. But when you look back, there's only one. So when you study Chinese medicine, don't always think as one thing, because you see the fun, the organs, especially when we discuss the, the organs, we although we discuss the the heart, all along, similar to your anatomy, it based on an anatomy, but when we discuss the heart, we include the physical heart from your anatomy. We also include the heart function. The function is something you can't see. Physical heart is something you can see. You will see what does it mean. Something you can't see and something you can see. This is 
Then when you see the heart, you need to think about it too. This chi is from one, from one kind of chi. But this chi we will divide into two, one's in, one's yang. Then you will go to the next theories, yin and yang theories. Why the chi in in organs we will dis we will separate them into different yin chi or yang chi. We will we will include the chi, the chi in organs we include the function both the function and the organs, the vehicle organ, that's yin and yang. So when we study this theories, when we study these terms, especially for qi, yin and yang and five elements, these terms are quite popular nowadays. When we study, don't look the definition from Google. If you have confusion, find the resources from your textbook. That's the correct definition of these definitions because from the internet there's something right, something wrong. And if you absorb the wrong theories, it's very now it's very hard or very difficult for you to change it in future. And also don't use your common sense. Especially from the your common sense from from internet. Sometimes it's not that correct or not that accurate. So when we start so the next theories we're going to discuss is yin and yang theories. Why are we going to separate the the zhang the qi in zhang fu organs in the heart? It's going to separate them into yin and yang, or why we need to when we talk about the physical heart, we also think about the the function, the heart function. It's because the physical and heart is relate, related to yin and yang. And then when you go to yin and yang, what does it mean by yin and yang? From the definition, yin and yang are gen generalization of the opposite attributes of some interrelated objects or phenomena in nature. So from the definition, you see this it's a concept of the opposite at attributes, opposite sides of what kinds of objects. These objects need to have something similar, some relationship. That's why it's an interrelated object or phenomena in nature. In a young theorist believes that the world is a material is a material whole and the world itself is result from of the unity of opposite between yin and yang. The interactions of yin and yang promotes the occurrence of the objects and development of the, and transformation of objects. So from the this theories you will see this the world itself is the result of unity of opposite between yin and yang. It's very similar. The when we when we discuss the essence and qi theories, we said that the essence and qi is is the substance which composed of the the world. Now we said the world is the unity of opposites between yin and yang. And what's the relationship between qi? Or the essence and yin and yang. It's actually the same stuff. Yin and yang and qi, they're the same, but why we use yin and yang? That's because yin and yang is abbreviations of yin qi and yang qi. So, for instance, for this picture, the black and white circle, the white part we call yang, the dark part is yin. Yang we also refer to Yang Qi, Yin we also refer to Yin Qi. 
and then the whole circle of this circle we call qi this qi can be divided into two opposite sides of yin and yang although this this circle is not a career picture we're going to see the career picture in later and know also why we're going to introduce yin and yang theories it's very similar as a human being as we want to study if i want to study if i want want to understand as human being as ourself so the first thing i'm going to understand is that's what kinds of objects consider as human being so you see this group of people we consider as human beings but then if i want to study more if i want to know more about human beings i'm going to divide it them i'm going to divide them into different groups there's one groups there's one group that we call we're going to divide them by different genders one's male one's female so we have study on male i'm going to know more about the male now study on female are also going to know more about the female but this way of thinking to divide the whole into different parts that's the the way of thinking in of yin and yang theories we actually use this kind of this kind of thinking automatically but we actually apply the theories in our thoughts you can see the this circle the second circle it's a it's a round circle and it's empty inside this circle we call qi qi is something you can't see and it consists of everything there and then this qi this circle can divide into two parts one's the white parts one's the dark parts and there's one dark spot in the white part and there's one white spot in the dark part. We're going to discuss what why they draw that does. Why I said the picture on the left side is not correct. And the picture on the right side is kind of correct, but also not correct. But that's the the picture on the right side, the with with the S in between is the most common yin and yang picture we we see not in on internet or in most books the reason why because it looks better but it's also not a correct picture but when we compare with these two picture the one on the left and the one on the right when you compare how do you feel What kinds of feelings from the picture do you have? Then, if you watch from the video, you can pause for a few seconds and try to feel what kind of feeling you can actually experiencing from the the picture. I'm not going to stop here. In if in the context class, we're going to have a question. I'm going to give you a few minutes to feel. So. When you watch the video, you can stop by your, you can pause by yourself. From the left side, with a straight line between the white part and the black part, it should have that kind of feeling static. Something stop. It don't move. One side white, one side black. And then from the right side of the picture with the, the reverse x you will you you might have that kind of feeling that the the dark spots and the white parts they're moving they're tone they, they keep toning and there's no stop because there's no balance there when there's no balance they will keep moving 
that's exactly why we want to we we prefer to use the the picture on the right side to describe the relationship between yin and yang and also actually the picture this kind of picture is not something we draw and then when we discuss more in yin and yang theories you will understand how the picture come where does the picture come from it's actually from the the movement of the the sun and the earth so here how to drop this how to drop this picture how to drop this line as you can see this line change a little bit you can reverse back to the previous slides the previous slides the yin and yang the drawing is, looks better this one doesn't look that good but this is the from the nature what does the, this mean is the line here is the movement between the sun and the earth how to drop this line is if you put a pole on the ground so here you put a pole on the ground and then for instance every day of the year at 12 o'clock you're going to see the sun at for instance at 12 o'clock and noon at 12 o'clock every day the first day you're going to drop you see the the shade the sun the tip the top of the pole and then you see the shade you mark here and then from the second day you can do mark again somewhere there so from the top when you see you will see when you mark there the pose was here you put the pole here the shade the sound from somewhere because you see our the earth is not straight that's why you, you're going to mark here the second day and then that's for one year after one year you're going to have this kind of line so yin and yang actually this s line is the this s line represents the sun movement and why we use the sun movement to represent yin and yang so if you go to the is you go to the definition of yin and yang what does it mean by yin and yang initially you see the picture on the on this side this picture yin and yang in, initially it means i'm going to go to next page because when i record this i can't re return back so you can remember this Picture. there's a lake or a river so we prefer to because we're going to use it as a lake example so imagine here's a lake here is the mountain and here's the shade and here's shining to facing the sun so remember this this picture and then we go to the to give you the characters of yin and yang first Yang stems for the dynamic, positive, and energetic aspect of a system. And yin stands for inward, negative, and static aspect. So you can see from here, they all opposite. Dynamic, inward, positive, negative, energetic, and static. So as you can see from the picture here, it's similar, some, somewhat more energetic that we call the yang. When the depressed, we call the yin. So that's the yin and yang, just in general, what does it mean? What does yin and yang mean? It's the dynamic, positive and negative. So it describes the opposite sides of the interrelated aspects. No? Let's go back to this picture. What's the initial meaning of yin and yang? Yang refers to the southern part of a mountain. The northern part of a lake. Remember, this theory is from ancient China, 
China stay in the north of the planet. So from the north of, of the planet, you see from the north of the planet, the southern part of the mountain. The, imagine here is, if here is the southern part of the mountain, they always enjoy more sun. That's because we stay in the north and the sun in the middle. They, that's also what, exactly why our house in South Africa be facing the north. That's the in the house in China. We face in the south because we want to enjoy more sun. That's good for your health. That's Yang. The southern part of mountain. So the southern part of mountain here, the southern part of mountain. We call it Yang. And then the southern part of mountain and the northern part of the the lake. The southern part of the mountain and then the the northern part of the lake. Although we use two words to describe here, it's actually the the same. It's it's actually the, the same area, the northern part of the mountain, the southern part of the mountain, and the northern part of the lake, just to, to describe one area from different different aspects. What's common in the southern part of the mountain? In is the northern part of a mountain. So the northern part of a mountain is something behind there, behind and the southern part of a lake. But when you see from here, here is the northern part of the other mountain. And here is the southern part of the lake. So as you can see, there's two different areas. One's the southern part of the mountain, one's the northern part of the mountain. But what's in common here? The southern part of the mountain, exactly what you see from this picture, it's brighter, enjoy more sun. And when you stand under the sun, you begin to feel warm, you feel brighter. And then in summer it's warmer. That's why you see when we use a lot of this kind of theories when we describe, try to understand the phenomena in the in the nature or and also in our physical body. As you can see from the table. Yang refers to up, outside, left, south, sky, day, spring and summer. So what's in common? The south, the southern part of the mountain, the south, we call it Yang. The sky is higher, the day is brighter, the summer is and spring and summer is warmer, hot. Dry, light, light, fountainless, something move outwards, something more active, excited. So these we call the yang. In something move down, something inside on the right side, in the north, and the earth. When you compare with sky. Day and night, night, autumn and winter, hot and cold, dry and humid, light and heavy, from the fullness downwards, static, depressed. So for the yin and yang definition, this table is very important. You need to remember them. You, you actually can use the definition of yang. What does yang mean? How to understand? Yang refers to up, outside, left, south. Day, spring, hot, dry, light, from this outwards, active, excited aspect. If you remember all this, 
Now you will understand what's, what's young. In, down inside right north and earth night on campus. Because these have something in common, have something similar, such as day and night, day is brighter, night is darker. On the other hand, if you say brighter and darker, white and black, white is young, black is in, and day also warmer, night also cooler, so warm and cool, hot and cold. Under the sun is dry, without the sun it's humid. So they, if you think the fields, the knowledge behind these, they got something in common, that's why we put them in groups. Now you will understand that we actually use yin, yang, yin and yang theories to put everything in the nature into two groups. One group, the group name we call yang, the other group name we call yin. That's exactly why we use this theory. And up outside, high sky, they all have something in common. Then there's some quiz here. You can ask yourself first, water and fire, day and night, dry and humid, bright and dark, happy and sad, male and female, dogs and chickens, warm and cold. You can pause for a few minutes and then I'm going to tell you the answer now. The water compared with the water and fire, which one's in, which one's yang. The fire is yang, water is in. And because in terms of temperature, fire is hot, water is cold. Day and night, day is yang, night is in. Compared in terms of the the, the light, the brightness, day is brighter, night is darker, dry and humid in terms of humidity, dry is young, humid is in, bright and dark, bright is young, dark is in in terms of light, happy and sad, happy is young, sad is in, and also compared with male and female. Male is young, female is in, because in just in general, male is stronger, the, the body structure is stronger than female, or male is bigger than female. So that's in general compared with male and female. Male considered as young, female considered as in, warm and cold. Warm considered as young, cold considered as in. In terms of the temperatures, you see, when we discuss here, when I gave you the answers of this quiz, I always tell you that in terms of water and fire, in terms of... Then, when you compare with dogs and chickens, this question is quite tricky. Which one's in and which one's yang? If in your test, I I ask you to tell me which one's in, which one's yang between dogs and chickens. You can put your hand up and then say, Dr. Hu, that's the wrong question. The reason why is dogs and chickens, there's, there's nothing in related. That's exactly why we, in the definition we said when we compare with yin and yang, when we discuss yin and yang, they must have something interrelated. They have something relation have some relations in between dogs and chickens. There are no relations in between. That's also exactly why the the other questions like water and fire, day and night. You can't ask me what's the yin and yang nature of water and day or water and night. You can't compare them because they are not interrelated. Everything we describe in yin and yang, they must be inter interrelated. Okay. So, hope the the above information we we be, we will make order we will feel in order and um, from this video we going to we actually focus on the essence and qi theories in Chinese medicine. 
and the yin and yang definition. In the next video, we're going to study the contents of yin and yang. And also, we're going to study how to apply yin and yang in Chinese medicine.